Good morning, Watermark Kids. Happy Sunday. I am so happy to be here with you this morning. Do you guys remember what we learned last Sunday? It was a long time ago, I know. And we have really busy weeks. So it's going to be hard to remember, but let me refresh your memory. Do you remember how Saul became king? And then last week, we learned that Samuel had found out that Saul was not going to be king much longer because he was making really, really bad choices. So this week, we're going to look at Samuel listening to God again to find out who was going to be the next king. That is where we're going to start. Samuel, again, was a prophet of God, and God spoke through Samuel to tell the nations of Israel things that they were doing wrong, how they could appoint a king, um, and just all that really important information that God wanted to send out his, to his people, he sent through Samuel at that time. So now God had a plan to replace Saul with a new king. So let's find out exactly what happened. I'd like to invite Samuel to come up, and we are going to tell the story of how David became king. So God had told Saul that he would not be king much longer. Samuel was very sad about that. He was sad that Saul had disobeyed God, but one day God said to Samuel, Samuel, how much longer are you going to feel sad about Saul? Go visit Jesse, who lives in Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be the next king. Of course, now that Saul knew he was going to be not going to be king much longer, he was really unhappy, and he was wondering who might become the next king. Saul might want to kill that person and anyone who might help him. So, to be safe, Samuel took an animal to sacrifice with him. When Samuel got to Bethlehem, he invited all the people to come celebrate. He invited Jesse and his sons, too. And so Jesse and his sons came along with everyone else. Samuel watched carefully as Jesse arrived. He had seven sons with him. Eliab was the oldest, and he came up first. When Samuel saw him, he remembered how tall and handsome Saul had been. So he looked, he thought to himself, surely, surely this is the one the Lord will anoint to be king, of course. Well, listen while I read Samuel 16, 7. Samuel 16, 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. But God is paying attention to what's on the inside. He cares about what's in a person's heart. Samuel did not know what was in the heart of these young men. So Samuel waited and listened. Next, Jesse sent up a second son to Samuel. Samuel waited, and God said, Hmm, the Lord has not chosen this one either. But of course, there were more sons to be seen. One by one, Jesse sent them to stand in front of Samuel. Son number three. Hmm. Then number four. Hmm. Okay. Well, here's number five then. Maybe, maybe number five. Hmm. Okay, well, we're getting, we're running out, but maybe number six. Let's try number six. <sighs> Finally, number seven passed in front of Samuel. And God still said, nope, not that one. What? Out of seven sons, the Lord had not chosen one for Samuel to appoint? What was wrong? God had sent Samuel here to anoint one of Jesse's sons. <gasps> oh, of course. God said he, to anoint a son of Jesse. So there must be another son somewhere. Samuel asked, is this all? Or do you have any more sons? 
Jesse replied, I do have another son. He's the youngest. He's out in the field taking care of the sheep. Bring him here. We won't begin the celebration without him, said Samuel. So a servant ran to go find the other son. They all waited and waited and waited. And they were not going to have this feast until Samuel met the last son of Jesse. He had to be the one God had told Samuel about. Finally, the servant came back with the young man much younger than Eliab. He was handsome, red from running. Whew. God had chosen this young man to be the next king, the one no one remembered to invite, the one who everyone thought was just a sheep keeper. Samuel stood before, Samuel stood before Jesse's family and he poured a little oil from his flask onto David's head. Why do you think he did that? This shows that God had chosen David to be the next king. And from that day on, God's spirit was with David. No one knew when he'd become king, but everyone did know that God had chosen David and that David loved God with his whole heart. So friends, isn't that interesting that God chose the youngest son of all seven, or all eight actually, there were seven before him that could have been the ones to serve. But no, because God knew David's heart, and David's heart was different than the ones of his brothers. God always chooses the most unlikely people in the most unlikely places to do his work, to do the work for his kingdom. He is so good and so faithful, and he chooses people like you and me to be, to be his servants, to be his children, to be his light his light to other people. So I want you to remember that. And next week we'll learn more about David because there was a lot of great things that David did and some not so good things because no one's perfect. David wasn't perfect either. He made some mistakes and, and bad choices along the way, but God used him to complete his story of redemption for his people. And we'll learn about that next week. All right, friends. It was great to see you this Sunday. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.